All we gotta do is play it safe and stack some money. I will decide what I do next. Your character is just this force of comedy. I mean, he's also sort of an obstacle, but he's just fall down funny through this whole movie. And I was reading that your improvs were legendary when shooting this. Uh, was there any particular note that you remember <laughs> worked the best on set? Well, it's not a note. It's really a feeling. You know, Nisha, she put together a great crew. And, and you know, it was just a, a very chilled atmosphere. You felt like you could work without any drama that's usually on the set. You know, there was a lot of uh, good vibes. And so when you got an atmosphere like that, when you got a director who respects your work, respects your range and uh, knowing that you're going to keep it in pocket but still make it pop. Um, that's the best director to work with, the ones that let you actually become the character and actually let you contribute to, to the movie. He had a lot to say about shady managers and he had a lot of fun making this character about, <laughs> I think, a lot of people he's come into contact with over the years in the industry. Um, but yeah, he is comedic gold. He just like will always surprise you, always make you laugh. I'm trying to convince him to write a book. He's like, yeah, I'll call it Cubisms. And I was like, I will buy Cubisms. I will pre-order <laughs> Cubisms. Wait, I didn't get to do any scenes with them. So I didn't ever, I saw him once in like a, in a, from a distance and one scene and I was like, man, that's a cool cat over there. I love that energy. I want to be like that. But that was about it. I would hear stories about it. I'd be like, man, Cube really like laid him out for all of y'all today, I heard. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> 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 well, that just means that has to happen in the sequel. Yes, 100%. We need uh, the high note, too. <laughs> <laughs> the upper register. Upper register, yes. <laughs> yes, Mike. Well, Grace, have you thought any more about the Vegas residency? Actually, I think it's time I record a new album. I mean, that's one plan. We're getting a VOD release of the high note. And I was wondering how you feel this is the perfect movie for to be released at sort of this perfect time. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, I will say the movie is joyful and uplifting. Um, so in that sense, it feels like the perfect movie for this time in the sense that it's got a lot of layers. You know, you can you laugh, hopefully you'll cry. You get to listen to really fantastic music that's original and also really beautiful source music and needle drops that we have known and loved over the years. So it's to me like a, a movie that um, embraces nostalgia, but also is presenting a refreshing new take on a, a familiar like relationship. So it's, it's one of those studio films that I've always loved growing up that I would like run to the theater and watch. You never know. I mean, it's a great movie. I think, you know, people would have rushed to the theaters to see this because, you know, it's it's great music. The storyline is is very relatable to anybody who's who's maybe not happy with their position and ready to move up, looking for the courage to to take that leap of faith. And um, this movie represents all that and it's, it's it's about the music business. It's LA, you know, you feel like you're on Sunset, you know, at, at Sunset. So it's just a, it's an amazing look all the way around. First of all, every time I see a musical personally or anything with music, it makes me start singing the songs all day. And I think these songs are so beautiful. Tracy's Love Myself is what I need. I think we need to remind ourselves of that. Um, some of the other songs are more fun, and I just think it keeps your energy, and it's uplifting, and keeps your energy high and your spirits high during a time where it can easily kind of sink low if you turn on the news or if you just look outside and kind of go, why nobody went, put your mask on, you know? Um, <laughs> this movie, it keeps you it keeps you feeling, it keeps you sane, you know? It, it kind of feels like a, a good summer movie too, just because you kind of feel like that LA sunshine coming through every frame of this. Without a doubt, you know, it's a great feel good movie especially at a time when you can't go to the concerts. Uh, we can't yeah. really really gather like that. So to see a movie and re reminisce about, you know, the good old days, you know, the good old days of 2019, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> it was so kinda, long ago. Yeah, I know. I remember I'm gonna tell my grandkids about it. Uh, so, so, you know, it's kind of uh, cool to have, 
you know, to let us know what we need to get back to, let us know what we miss, and also uh, something to root for. You know, you root for Maggie to break through um, and to uh, become everything she want to be. What am I supposed to say to her? I'm just a personal assistant, but I'd love to produce your music. Let me do my job and you do yours, which is get her coffee, Kleenex, Kotex, and whatever else the hell we've been paying you to do for the last six months. This is your big music debut. Uh, how did you feel about, or at least in the movies, uh, how did you feel about debuting your voice in the high note? And what sort of prep did you have to go through to do that? Ah, uh, man, it, it was so, it was such a beautiful opportunity and it made me so, grateful that I got to do it with these people, with Rodney Jerkins, Doc Child, and a legendary producer, with Tracy Ellis Ross, you know, with Q being in the movie, though we didn't get to make any music together, but the fact that Q was just there, um, is it just, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge, it's a huge moment for me, and I was nervous, and I wanted to make everybody proud, but I also knew that I also wanted to like just give that little boy inside me that, you know, seven, eight year old, nine year old, 10 year old Kelvin an opportunity to kind of like follow his dream that he, he kind of abandoned for a little bit because he thought he wasn't good enough, just like David. So it was huge, but it took vocal lessons. We were on vocal lessons 45 minutes a day every day. We were doing guitar lessons for an hour every day. You know, it was uh, it was researching a lot of music and just just, you know, jumping off and seeing what happens. Now, what was an important trope for you to avoid in sort of re-spinning the uh, driven career professional female lead? Because I remember reading that you were saying that, that this is sort of a movie that we don't see in this mode very often. Definitely. I mean, I think that was more, I was saying that, you know, when we see movies about the music industry, it's often focused on a male star, but also it gets pretty depressing. Like it usually has a hard turn into addiction and, you know, depression or suicide and so this one doesn't do that this is just about embracing the fun of being an artist and the fun of the music industry i mean there are absolutely obstacles and conflicts and and problems but i think part of it is it's really fun what we get to do for a living you know like this is a fun industry to be a part of and sometimes when you watch movies it loses sight of that you know that that we're all living our dreams right now so I think for me, I just wanted to really give this love song to LA, this city, this industry, the music scene here is like such a fantastic, um, diverse music scene. And also to avoid the trope of the scary boss put upon assistant and really show a new take on that and how these two are sort of dependent in each other's lives, but also wholly independent in their own um, journeys and what they're facing. 